There are approximately 200 billion trillion stars, 200 billion galaxies, and 100 billion supermassive black holes, all of them are mostly made up of matter. There is something which is totally opposite to matter, an antimatter, and in this episode, we are going to nuke the Earth's core with an antimatter bomb. We have already made a video on antimatter. With those basics in place, let's divide the whole episode into two parts. Part 1. Making an antimatter bomb. There is strong evidence that the observable universe is composed almost entirely of ordinary matter, as opposed to an equal mixture of matter and antimatter. This asymmetry of matter and antimatter in the visible universe is one of the great unsolved mystery in physics. 99.999% of what exists in our universe is definitely matter and not antimatter. So extracting antimatter can be challenging. When electrons are passed through gold nuclei, it causes the electrons to emit energy quanta that decay into both matter and antimatter. In this method, positrons are detected at a higher rate and with greater density. Positrons are positively charged beta rays. Antimatter weapons are currently too costly, as producing antimatter is enormously expensive, estimated at $6 billion for every 100 nanograms. The quantities of antimatter generated are very small, and current technology has great difficulty containing antimatter, which annihilates upon touching ordinary matter. The paramount advantage of such a theoretical weapon, is that antimatter and matter collisions result in the entire sum of their mass energy equivalent being released as energy, which is at least two orders of magnitude greater, than the energy release of the most efficient fusion weapons. Annihilation requires and converts exactly equal masses of antimatter and matter in the collision, which releases the entire mass energy of both, which for 1 gram is approximately 9 times 10 to the 13 joules. Using the convention that 1 kiloton TNT equivalent equals 4.184 times 10 to the 12 joules, 1 half gram of antimatter reacting with 1 half gram of ordinary matter, which is 1 gram total, results in 21.5 kilotons equivalent of energy, the same as the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. Part 2 nuking the core let's consider we overcame the obstacles described in part one and placed our antimatter nuke in the core of the earth to not get disappointed like in previous episode we have to take some help from math according to scientific equations we will need about 10 carat 32 joules of energy to explode the earth in a spectacular way so we have to extract about 5.5 times 10 to the 14 kilograms of antimatter the same amount of ordinary matter is also required to initiate the reaction. Thus, in total, 1.1 times 10 to the 15 kilograms of nuclear material are required. Let's press the button. 3, 2, 1. When matter and antimatter come into contact, they destroy each other, leaving a massive amount of pure energy. In our case the energy emitted is greater than binding energy of Earth. The current binding energy of Earth is 2.24 times 10 to the 32 joules. The massive energy will try to escape outwards into space, causing pressure on the Earth's crust. Just like a grenade explodes, the Earth will shatter into pieces. Millions of pieces of rock and crust will yeet into space. Hiding underground will not help to protect us from this inevitable entity. Our precious life on Earth will see its last moment with their own eyes. Let's hope humanity will use such energy for good reasons.